aspiring to cars, the hot hatch took the form of something like a Citroen Saxo VTR or a VTS. In fact, if you were taking the boy racer thing seriously, it was all about the VTS. 118 horsepower, 16 valve, four cylinder car, and that was great. And if you were really, if you were really in the money and aspiring big time, Audi's own cars, the S3, was running a 1.8 liter, uh, just over 200 horsepower. I mean, to have, a, to have a 200 horsepower hot hatch a few years ago was amazing. But I'm gonna reverse engineer this situation just to give this car a little bit more context. Only 10 years ago, Audi launched their flagship sports car, the Audi R8, and it was initially launched in a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 variation. That car was pushing 420 horsepower. That was their flagship sports car. Today, we are in Audi's new RS3 Quattro, and it is running just under, basically 400 horsepower. But to give it more context, it is also running a twin clutch seven speed gearbox, Quattro all wheel drive, and just a very, very intelligent ECU that uh, optimizes and allocates torque uh, where it requires, depending on slip. Now, normally I complain about me filming in the rain because let's face it, when you're driving fast, sporty cars, you don't really want it to be rainy. But today's perfect because we are in a Quattro car and to me, Quattro systems are all about practicality in uh, adverse or not ideal driving conditions. So what have we got? Well, as I mentioned, just shy of 400 horsepower. Quattro all-wheel drive system. And we are going through some standing water and I'm yet to even get the traction control light flashing on the dash. It, the way this thing applies power in pretty terrible conditions. I mean, if you were gonna get any worse, it would be snowing. Listen to it as well. That inline five which is now mounted transversely. So by convention, these cars were longitudinally mounted, straight five cylinder engines. Audi have gone and uh, mounted it differently from an angle I can only assume is to drop the center of gravity. It's, it's fascinating because the evolution of what I would conventionally class as a hot hatch has evolved into what I would now class as a hyper hatch. I drove to this event in my 458 Speciali in this terrible rain, and I can honestly say, point to point, in conditions like this, I, you are not gonna escape this car. The weather is terrible, the car is perfect. Ridiculous, flat in second that was, in the wet, mind-boggling grip and capability. It's just sensational. Now, the keen-eyed of you will have noticed that I am actually driving the RS3 Saloon. For all intents and purposes, this is, I would essentially say, a more practical version of the Sportback. My personal preference, and it's totally based on aesthetics, is the Sportback. It just has, this, it doesn't take itself too seriously. In my eyes, this is almost a sort of family car. It's beautiful, but I think it's a little bit too straight laced. Same engine, same performance, only weighs slightly more than the Sportback, but I love the aesthetics and the stance and squat that the Sportback brings. Handling wise, I've jumped in and out of both. Very similar. I would imagine in the dry, this thing is 
immense, but I'm actually more impressed in the wet. I'm yet to have this thing remotely step out on me. Now, you could argue that you're simply not driving it fast enough, sir, but we are on a public road and I'm driving as quick as I would comfortably like to. Now, of course, Audi are renowned for that build quality, which is why, first of all, not only has the evolution of the hot hatch in build quality evolved, evolution of the price has evolved too. This car, no options, is coming in at 44 thousand pounds sir of course there are a plethora of performance enhancing options including carbon ceramic brakes whether you need those or not i'm not sure it depends on how swift you like to drive but of course the benefits of uh, carbon ceramics aren't just lack of fade but also unsprung weight which i would imagine adds to this steering feel which despite it being electronically assisted rack the feel is beautiful god i'm just it's the performance though. It's just phenomenal grip. The torque as well. We're running 480 Newton meters of torque. I think we're becoming blase with these with these figures. While that not might sound too much, it's it's the way this thing applies it to the road you're, you you're, you're you're able to exploit so much of it but just because of the confidence this system instills in you i'm still getting over how much grip it's got in the wet interestingly for me so if you watch this channel regularly you'll know that i own an the the audi s1 quattro it's their sort of entry level little performance hatch when i drive that car and i'm getting the same feeling with this that it can just deal with so much more more power the chassis the drivetrain the grip this gearbox so as i mentioned 400 horsepower i it could easily deal with five <laughs> and i know that's crazy because i've just been talking about you know how far do you want to push these cars but it's such a capable platform that i really think this car is going to become a tuner's delight i think it's such a robust engine um, that say you were to own one of these as more of a long term or you are planning on keeping it for a fair few years you could breathe so much more extra life into it by partnering with uh, some legit tuning guys i know ab who are audi's official tuning partner offers some incredible upgrades for these cars <laughs> Shmi 150, talking about how crazy over the last 10 years how the hot hatch has yeah, evolved. evolved. A minute ago, they were telling us that they have um, a hollowed out prop shaft to save weight. <laughs> and they said the last time they did that was on a world rally car. Yeah. And this is in a consumable it's hot hatch. Mental. It's obscene. So th these guys have gone to quite a, a lot of effort to save weight. I think it's 25 kilograms uh, lighter, yes, or might be 26. 26 kgs lighter. It's in that ball and ball. that's from things like magnesium casing yeah. on the engine, lighter hollowed alloys. out prop shaft, yeah, lighter alloys. I, I approached today thinking, how much more could they have evolved this platform? Turns out quite a lot. Yeah. Back to where we started. What a piece of kit. As, in, as a performance daily, I don't know where else you would look. It's so capable. As I mentioned, usually I would complain that it's raining, but to test the car out today, being on these wet, greasy British B roads has been a phenomenal test of this Quattro system. The traction you have is incredible. I really had to push it, even to get the traction control light to flash on this dash. It's amazing. What I would say though is it, it does kind of stop at being a very high performance daily. Uh, it doesn't have a huge amount of theater and drama. It does make you smile because you sometimes get caught off guard by how much power and traction it's got. But it is very much just a sort of fast practical daily car. I, on a day like today, I would probably sooner be in that than a supercar. Point to point, the capabilities and the reassurance and confidence you get from this car is otherworldly. It's a fantastic platform. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.